Hi YouTubers, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler and I'm here to do another worm test. Um, from the bakery, I fortunately have a bakery over the road from here and they save me all the coffee grounds and scraps. Now today we've got half a bucket of um, tomatoes, been all sliced up. Um, so it's a great chance to throw these through my garden mulcher and uh, give the worms a run at them and see if uh, there's any issues feeding tomatoes to the worms. There's a lot of uh, misinformation about what you can feed worms, so these tests uh, should give you a good guide as to what you can and what you can't. I do love this mulcher. I pour just about everything through here and it handles all the fleshy uh, stuff really well. It doesn't do such a good job on dry sticks and paper and that sort of stuff, but for this sort of job, it's ideal. I had a bit of trouble with some of these tomatoes that weren't sliced up but uh, I got them all through and uh, I turned them into almost a soup as you'll see in a tick. So I did the whole half bucket and there we go. Now as you'd expect tomatoes are very juicy. Um, the mulch has just made a real sort of slurry of it. Um, but it's certainly broken them up and the smaller the food particles the quicker they'll uh, start to rot, get the bacteria going on them and the quicker the worms will get involved. So I'll spread some of these on my worm farm now, my testing station, and we'll uh, see how it goes. Alright, this end bay is just right for another test. Um, I don't actually harvest the castings from this worm farm, I just dig them over. And you can see there's still a few worms left in here, but most of them have gone to another, another bay here where this is the residual from a test I did a little while back on zucchinis and there's plenty of worms in there eating that what's left and this end I've actually put a bit of shredded paper in and it's quite a few worms getting into that so I like to alternate um, obviously introduce some carbon uh, whether it be cardboard or paper or uh, or dried leaves in between tests on uh, nitrogen rich, rich foods so now this end we shall introduce some of this tomato slop which we've created um, so I'll put a good layer in here as well uh, the standard uh, the standard procedure is to leave it in here for a check it after a week usually the worms haven't done too much in that time because it starts to break down and the second week if they like the product they'll get into it so uh, we'll run this for a couple of weeks I'll check in next week and let you know what's happening One week gone, let's see if the worms have enjoyed their tomatoes or whether they don't like them. Okay, looks like the tomatoes are all gone in a week. Now I put that whole half bucket in here and there's, look at that, there's stacks of worms in there. There still looks to be just some residual pieces of tomato skin. But the tomatoes themselves have totally vanished in a week. I was going to do this as a two-week trial. But yeah, there's some skins around the front. But there you go. No issues with tomatoes and worms. Anyone that tells you that they're too acidic, I'd say myth busted. Um, and as I've said before, and those who watch my worm tests know that this worm testing bay well, centre has three bays. The worms are free to travel from one to another so if they don't like something they will move away and if they do like it well obviously they like worms because they've gone there and eaten them all up this end I've got plenty of worms eaten in some paper here so there's lots of activity in this bay it's a, a in this worm farm it's a great spot to test products um, and clearly tomatoes can be added to the list of what to feed the worms no issues at all that was half a bucket full there so if you've got one or two, you certainly don't have any qualms about, shouldn't have any qualms about adding them to your worm farm with other stuff. Um, no problems at all. Thanks for watching.